Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit. It is Friday. Woo! -hoo! Hope you have a great weekend plan. Uh, it is Friday, June the 23rd. Can you believe we're almost through with June? Uh, and it's about 135 degrees outside. Woohoo on that too. Uh, it's 6.05 and I'm glad to be with you this morning. Do me a favor. Do the Breakfast Biscuit a favor. Hit the share button and the like button and the subscribe button and all those other buttons. Uh, that'll help us spread the Breakfast Biscuit around Southeast Texas and beyond. I appreciate that. And uh, Sunday morning, I will finish my series on mountaintop experiences in the Bible with the ascension of Jesus Christ back to heaven uh, from the Mount of Olives. It's a very powerful thing, and it uh, has lots of uh, ramifications and impl implications for us uh, as we live our lives as Christians. So this morning, we are in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, and uh, <clears throat> the title of the breakfast biscuit is 4, 3, 2, 1. Not 4,321, but 4-3-2-1. Okay? I think you'll understand it by the time we get through. And if you put it to use in your life, I think it'll help you. And we've got some ways to do that right at the very end of the biscuit. So off we go. Uh, I have spent a lot of my life uh, studying languages. That's a great thing for a preacher to do, to be prepared uh, for work with the Scripture. I've spent a lot of time learning uh, languages, and I've spent all of my adult life studying Scripture with and in. Uh, those languages. While I am rusty uh, at almost all of them, I am still the beneficiary of having learned them and understanding their dynamics and peculiarities. Uh, Hebrew is a pretty primitive language. Greek is an exquisite language. Latin is the ultimate classic. German is powerful and has great specificity. And English, or at least Southern English, uh, is the mother tongue for me. But one thing all of those languages have in common is that they use repetition to make a point many, many times. In Proverbs 8.13, in the New International Version, the old 84 uh, New International Version, it says this, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. Okay, we don't think that's surprising anybody. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. And then there is a semicolon. And here comes the focus for today. This is God speaking. He says, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. So what's 4321 got to do with that? Well, let's look at it like this. This is a very powerful verse. The first part is extremely powerful and synthetic. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. But today we focus on the enumerated things that God Almighty says that he hates. They are fourfold. Four. Pride, arrogance evil behavior, perverse speech. Well, <clears throat> if you look at it like this, pride and arrogance are in fact synonyms. They mean almost exactly the same thing. So when we boil this down by volume to concepts, we're really looking at three. Pride and arrogance, synonyms, evil behavior, perverse speech. Okay. What does that mean? That means everything that you do that is evil Everything that you say that is evil, evil behavior and perverse speech, by volume, weigh as much as pride and arrogance. Hmm. How can that be? Because pride and arrogance are the roots of all kinds of evil, evil which is done and evil which is said. If you go back to the Garden of Eden, the pride thing is what got Adam and Eve what gets me and it's what gets you. There are two big tips I have for you this weekend. Number one, you can never think too highly of God. Number two, you nearly always think too highly of yourself. And those two things together cause us problems. Let's remember what the scripture says, let no man think more highly of himself than he ought. Be completely humble, be completely gentle and the greatest among you will be your servant. So, let me pray for you. God, we come to you today to just thank you for the fact that your word is so abundantly clear, explicit, simple, straightforward, <clears throat> and powerful. Thank you for the way your Holy Spirit inhabits that word. We pray that it would bring fruit in our lives today and that it would uh, conform us to the image of Christ. Lord, have mercy on us today. Thank you that it's Friday. Thank you that we can anticipate a respite 
Lord, thank you for the uh, glorious prospect of being together uh, and drinking some coffee and worshiping the Lord together Sunday morning uh, at the Holiday Inn. Lord, we love you. We ask you to forgive our sin, guide our thoughts, our deeds, our attitudes today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you right back here, bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.